Hello, brothers, sisters. Welcome, everybody, to the Central Christian Church. And uh, we're going to be continuing on our series on Reset. Uh, the goal of uh, this series for our Sunday service is so that we can learn to get our heart back to God. Uh, especially coming, uh, you know, now coming towards the year in, it's important for us to think about our life throughout this whole year. How has it been? Our strength, our weaknesses, so that we can set uh, New Year's resolutions, spiritual goals towards next year. So let's start. Reset. We have already done reset with all your heart and reset with all your soul. And today we're going to talk about reset with all your mind. So let's first read the team passage from Mark chapter 12, verse 29 to 31. The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. We set. So for today, we're going to talk about loving God with all our mind. For the word mind, it comes from the Greek word dianoia, which means deep thought, a faculty of understanding, feeling, and desiring. Basically, the mind is uh, the part of our brain where we take information, store knowledge, get understanding, wisdom, beliefs, and conviction. All right, so how do we love God with all our mind? And it's so important because our mind controls many aspects of our life. So let's read from Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So the Bible says here, the way we think, our beliefs, our conviction, our attitude, in our mind. Whatever we think in our mind, that's how we will be as a person. So our mind plays a very important part in our life. Uh, in the psychological term, they put it as the way a man thinks will determine his feelings and action. So here's a good quote that I want to quote that will help us understand the importance of our mind. This quote is by Joan of Arc. All battles are first won or lost in the mind. All our battles in life, whatever it is, it always starts with the mind and it will, whether we win or lose our battles in our life, it comes down to our mind. And why? Because our mind is about our attitudes, our beliefs, and our conviction. And if our mind are weak and we have low self-esteem, we're not strong in our beliefs, we will easily lose the battles, the struggles, the challenges it comes to you in your life. So in the same way, we need to learn to love God with all our mind because that's how we connect with God. So mind, the knowledge, wisdom, understanding, beliefs, and conviction. We need to have all of this, one focus, all in, to love God with all our mind. So now I'm going to talk about how are we going to Love God with all mind. I have two points for you. So the first one is set your mind on things above. Let's turn to Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above not on things on earth. So Paul challenges the church in Colossae 
to learn to set their minds on things above, on heavenly things. So this is the first step that will help us to learn to love God with all our mind. So when you look at this verse, setting our mind on things above, what comes to you? What does that mean? Set our minds on things above. When I think about setting our mind on certain things, it means forming a firm decision, a full focus, a resolute determination to do what we believe in. We, in our hearts, in our walk with God, to learn to love God with all our mind is we need to have that firm decision, that full focus and resolute determination to really love God and not to let anything shake us in our heart. Let me share with you an example of what it means to set your mind on certain things. Uh, you know, recently, as I shared with all of you, I went on a trip to America to attend my daughter's wedding. And uh, so the wedding was great. Everything was awesome. And after the, the wedding, we, Patrice and I, we have some free time by ourselves. And we decided to do some exploration and visit different sites uh, in America. So we went to uh, the Colorado, Denver, Colorado, uh, where my second daughter was uh, living. So during our free time, while my second daughter was in school, Patrice and I, we decided, well, let's, let's set our mind to do certain things and explore Denver, explore the mountains in Colorado. I remember on one of the day, we decided to go uh, see the glacier. I have never seen a glacier before. Okay, I was so excited. Wow, this will be the first time I'm going to see a glacier. And, uh, and the place that we're going to go is called St. Mary's Glacier. So we look up the map, set our GPS, and wake up early in the morning, and we set our mind to go towards that area. I remember driving on the big highway in America, highway four or five lanes, and we just went. We were so excited. Yes, that's the destination. I'm going to go there. That's our decision for today. We are going to reach the top of the mountain and we're going to see St. Mary's Glacier. It is going to be so beautiful as what I've seen in the photos. But you know what? As we travel, there were we began to face some difficulties and challenges. You know, the GPS told us, you need to take this particular exit. And when we come towards that exit, it was blocked. There was some construction going on on that exit. It's like, oh no, that's the exit to St. Mary's Glacier. So what are we going to do? You know, so of, of, of course I panicked a little bit. I... I went straight and I continue to go straight and luckily the GPS told us that hey there is another exit that you can uh, we can take uh, but unfortunately because of my little panicky uh, feeling I missed the other exit it's like ah <laughs> oh another difficulty then uh, luckily again Praise God for Google Map, GPS, it, it rerouted us and then we brought us to, you know, to the, another exit. Basically, we took a big U-turn back and, and went into uh, the exit towards the St. Mary's Glacier. So there was a little bit of challenges. And, you know, as I go into the exit and to the road towards St. Mary's Glacier, the road all of a sudden from a huge highway of four or five lanes narrowed down to one lane uh, road. It was like, oh, what's going on? You know, the, the road was narrow and then it begins to go up higher and higher and I can feel the, the power of the car uh, diminishing. It's like, oh, it's not as strong. And then as we go even further, the road began curvy, you know, uh, left and right. And then I can see cars coming down. It was like, whoa. This is going to be challenging. I haven't drove on a curvy road for, uh, uh, for a long time, especially going up on a mountain. 
And finally, of course, praise God, we reached our destination. We were happy, you know. The GPS said, here is St. Mary's Glacier. Then we look around us. We see the cliffs going down. We see the slopes going up. Where's the car park? We couldn't find the car park. So we went up and down. And, but finally, we found the car park. A small little car park. But we were determined to still go because... We have already set our mind that we're going to see the glacier, St. Mary's Glacier. Challenges or no challenges, we're going to go. You know, then we thought everything is going to be fine. And like all mountain trails, there will be a smooth mountain trail to the glacier. And then we went to the, the entrance and to, uh, to our surprise, the mountain trail is not like the other mountain trails or mountain hikes that we went before uh, in the other mountains or parks in Colorado. It was a very hilly, filled with rocks, a very slopey and, and scary trail. And we, we literally had to walk up on the rocks and there was not too many people and after walking about, you know, 10 to 15, 20 meters, uh, we were feeling exhausted because when you go higher, right, the, the air pressure goes down, the, the air gets thinner and, you know, and we have to take breaks in between every, every 50 meters, take a short break. And, and we're wondering, are we on the right trail? It's, it's tough. It's, it's hard. Can we make it? And we look up, we wonder, how far is it? We saw some people coming down, we asked them, how far? They said, oh, not too far. Okay, okay. We have already set our mind to go towards this area. So we kept going, but it never seems to end. And the worst thing is, there was no sign agents. You know, we went up the trail, but there was no sign to say, this is the way to St. Mary's Glacier. I, I was afraid that we were going to get lost because there were hardly anybody going up to that mountain, right, to that glacier. Maybe here and there, there was one person and, and if we see that one person, we, we hurriedly follow him and then all of a sudden the person disappeared. <gasps> what are we going to do? Are we going to get lost in the mountain of Colorado? But we were determined because we have set our mind and our heart, we're going to find the glacier. So we kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going. Signage or no signage, exhaustion or no exhaustion, we are going to find that glacier. And finally, Patrice saw, oh, there it is, the lake and the glacier. Wow, awesome, what a sight. We were so happy that we finally reached the destination, the place that we decided to go. Despite all the challenges, we made it. We're so glad. We had a picnic there. Uh, you know, he ate our lunch. We're so glad that we decided to overcome all the challenges to reach St. Mary's Glacier. Isn't St. Mary's Glacier beautiful? It is so wonderful. Wow, worth the challenge. And the reason we were able to make it is because we made that decision that focus, we already set our mind that this is the place we're gonna go today. You know, in, in the same way, in your walk with God, have you set your mind? Have you set your mind to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength? Where this is the focus. I'm gonna, I made this firm decision. I'm going to have this full focus, resolute determination in my mind to find the Lord and to be close to God. You see, when you have set your mind to seek after God with all your heart, no matter what obstacle comes in, no matter what challenges come in, yes, it's hard, it's exhausting, it's tiring, but you will be able to overcome because your mind tells you to be resolute to go towards your target, which for us is to love the Lord. 
So brothers and sisters, make that decision today. I'm going to set my mind. Solid set. I'm going to really have a close walk with God. So let's talk about some challenges. What are some challenges that could go against us to set our mind to make that firm decision to seek after God? Number one, it could be that we don't have enough information. And when you don't have enough information, it's hard for you to make a decision. And that's true because we need information so that we can decide on do, to do what is right or decide to know what choice and what option to choose. Information is very important. And in the same way with God, we need to find those information about God so that we can feel at ease, we can feel confident to seek after God. The good news is, the information about God is not too far away. It's, it's on your handphone, it's in your Bible, it's right here. You can get to know God. So there is all the information that we need. And besides that, there's also other books and, and articles that writes about God that can help us to know God better. So brothers and sisters, let's really make that decision to study the Bible to get those information so that you can know the Lord your God with all your heart and to understand Him and to form that belief so that you can love Him with all your mind. Then secondly, not only not enough information could be a problem, how about too much information? You know, today we are in a generation where there is a lot of information all over. There's so many books, media, internet, social media, YouTube, Facebook, too many information and we can get confused. What information should I follow about God? And it's no wonder some of us get confused. Our friends tell us this, our relatives tell us that, you know, the, the, uh, the media, the internet tell us another thing. It's like, you know, and sometimes there's fake news. It's like, what is true? What is right? Is, is Jesus the only way? Is God real? And you get confused. Well, here's another good news. Let's push aside all those information. Now, they are important and they can help you. But we have the standard. This is the standard that God has given us. And this standard has last through the test of time. It existed when it was first written and it is still here today. Many people try to criticize it, destroy the Bible, but the Bible is still where it is today. We can trust the Word of God. And push aside all those media. Let's focus on what does the Bible say. What does the Bible teach us about what is right and wrong? And follow that. All right, another area that might challenge us or uh, put as a roadblock for our decisiveness, to that firm decision to set our mind on God is not prioritizing the right things. You know, Bill Gates said, the one key to success, do you know what it is? Focus. We need to focus on a few things. Focus on what is important. And, and what else is more important than our walk with God? When our walk with God is all there, everything else will come in place. So brothers and sisters, let's prioritize on the right things so that we can set our minds on things above. And uh, another challenge could be we are not aware of our real issues. What's really stopping us or stopping you from set, uh, setting your mind on things above? There could be many things that are holding you back. You need to take some time, pray, seek advice from different brothers and sisters so that you can be aware of the real issues in your heart that is holding you back. 
from setting your mind on things about. And finally, another advice is some of us are ruled by emotions. Feelings are great and we need to learn to feel and to love God with our emotion. But our emotion alone can be like a roller coaster. Go up one day, go down the other day. Go up one day, go up the other day. And if we follow our emotion, then certain times we are so happy to follow Jesus, then certain times we are like, oh, unmotivated. So we must not follow our emotion or be ruled by our, our emotion. In fact, we just need to set our mind to do what is right. And it's amazing when you do that, your emotion will get straightened out. So those are some challenges that might face us on setting our mind on things above. So make that firm decision today, brothers and sisters, that one focus to set your mind on things above. Secondly, we need to fill our mind with heavenly things. Let's go to the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 8 through 9. Finally, brothers, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. Isn't that awesome to know? The Bible says, when you learn to fill your heart with heavenly things, the God of peace will be with you. Our mind here is the home or the dwelling place of all our thoughts. How is your home like? How is your dwelling place like? Let me show you some photos. This is a wooden cabin. Isn't it beautiful? I, I love cabin that is made of wood. You know, it, it forms the earth tone, it looks gorgeous, it's wonderful, it, it, it has that down-to-earth feeling. Now, let me show you the second picture. Oh, what a mess. What happened to this wooden cabin? Things are all over. What did they fill this house with? That beautiful house. You know, this has those two pictures. The first one, really gorgeous, really neat, really beautiful. The second one, a mess filled with, with rubbish and garbage everywhere. Clothes thrown here, you know, books thrown there. Something beautiful became something ugly because it was filled with mess. It was a messy place. You know, if Jesus were the I mean, if you were to walk into that house, how would you feel looking at that mess? You feel like, ah! In the same way, our mind is the dwelling place or the home of our thoughts. If Jesus were to come in today to your mind, what would he see? Would he see good things? Godly things? Spiritual things? Or would he see bad things? unspiritual things, sinful things, what would he see? It is important for us, in order to set our minds on things above, to, to love God with all our mind, to really learn to fill our mind with godly and heavenly things. And in this passage that we just read in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, to nine, it tells us what are the heavenly things, the spiritual things, the godly things, things that are true, things that are noble, things that are just, things that are pure, 
things that are of good virtue, things that are praiseworthy, things that you have learned and, and heard from spiritual brothers and sisters. And the Bible says what? Meditate. Meditate. Fill your mind with all these things. It is so important to fill our mind with godly things because there are many things that want to fill our mind. And whatever we have in our mind, like what we read earlier about that quote, as we think, so we are. Whatever we believe or, or think in our mind, that is, what, that is the direction that will go. So if you have a lot of spiritual things in your mind, you will be spiritual in your life, in your walk with God, in your decision making. And the Bible says God of peace will be with you. You have peace, tranquility, strength and confidence to overcome anything because God is going to walk closely with you. So let me give you some practical on how to fill your mind with good and godly things. What are some things to meditate on? Number one, rim. R I M. Read, interpret, memorize. Fill yourself to the rim with the Word of God. Read the Word of God. Study it to interpret it, to, to know and to understand. And memorize. Memorize scriptures. Memorize the Word of God so that it can be a part of you. So that's what it means to meditate on the Word of God. Fill your mind to the rim with the spiritual Word of God. Secondly, whatever that is praiseworthy, be grateful. You know, I, I, as I shared earlier, I've been doing journaling. And one of the sections of the journaling is I write about what I've been grateful for that day. How God has blessed me that day. And it is amazing. As I write down the things that I'm grateful for, it lifts up my heart. It helps me to see, wow, God is really working in my life, even though things are difficult around me. So I want to encourage you to do journaling. Write down things that you're grateful for every day. It doesn't have to be many. It can be rapid, uh, repeated from day to day because you can be grateful for the same thing. But that will really help you to see how God is working in your life. And then thirdly, learn to visualize and talk about your spiritual goals with the brothers and sisters around you. We, we, we have goals. We, we, we have things that we want to accomplish. And so often when we get together with other brothers, other sisters, we, we talk about just our earthly life goals. And that's great. Do that. Okay, we need to have earthly life goals to, to achieve, to be successful. But how about your spiritual goals? What do you want to achieve in your life for the kingdom of God? What kind of person do you want to be for Jesus this coming next year? We need to think about that. Visualize it. Dream about it. Talk about it. Be spiritual in your goals. And then the next one, think about how God is working in every situation. Yes, even bad situation. So often, when we're in a bad situation, we only see the negative. And sometimes we don't, we, because of the negativity in our mind, we do not see how God is working. But learn to pause. And to remember, the Bible says God is love. So in this challenging and difficult situation, how is God loving you? God is love. You know, when you learn to see that, that will also help you to grow in your love for God in your mind. And finally, I love this one. Good in, good out. Not garbage in, garbage out. G-I- Geo. Okay? Good in, good things go in, good things go out. Don't put garbage. Okay? 
Otherwise, when you put garbage in, garbage will go out. From whatever that is in your heart, in your mind, whatever that is good, it will come out. So let's learn that. Put good stuff in. And fill your mind with good and godly things. And in conclusion, let me read to you a quote from Sanju. It's a similar quote that Jonah Bach made. He wrote the book, The Art of War, a very famous book that many businessmen use. Every battle is won before it's even fought. What does that mean? The battle is won because you have studied, planned, thought through it, and prepared all in your mind, in your strategy, before you actually go out. So our mind, it starts with our mind. To win the battle of life, it starts with our mind. To win in our relationship with God, it starts with our mind. So, brothers and sisters, let us learn to love the Lord our God with all our mind. We talk about two things. Set our mind on things above and fill our minds with heavenly things. Thank you very much. I'll see you again. Bye.